Uh, thank you for tuning in to our weekly Sunday School show. I'm David Rhodes. It's my buddy, Mr. James Ruark. Uh, we are here uh, to study today's lesson out of the Union Gospel Press. Uh, today's lesson is entitled Losing and Gaining, coming out of Luke chapter 9, 18 through 27. It is with a little sorrow today that we're here on uh, just yesterday. Um, Mr. Kobe Bryant and his family, uh, his daughter lost their life in a tragic helicopter crash. Uh, there were several other families that... Nine people total, yeah. Yeah, so we pray for uh, their uh, families and... Um, you know, we're asking God to comfort their families at a time like this. I can't even imagine what, no. what they're feeling and going through it, but I know how I felt. And no. it, was, it, was a, it was a major prick in my heart yesterday. Yeah. Just awful tragedy, and we're supposed to mourn with those who mourn. Yeah. Weep with those who weep, and let's do that during this time. Uh, yeah. As they mourn and grieve, we pray for them and enter into their grief. Yes, very good. Yeah. All right. Um, I'll go ahead and, uh, oh yeah, one thing I wanted to mention too is that I'm really excited about this book here, uh, Union Gospel Press. I went to their website. Uh, you can see their site there. I would encourage you to go to the site. I'm going to have a link there for you to go to. Um, but um, Reverend Musselman started this organization. He had a vision. He was a pastor and he had a vision to reach uh, the unsaved, to reach the unchurched community, the folks that the church wasn't reached. Basically, he was going to do missions work in the neighborhood. Um, you know, and I believe you can do missions work in your neighborhood or you can go abroad as James is going to India. India. Yeah. yeah. So across the street or around the world, we're called to go into the world, not have the world come to us. Amen. That's good. Yeah. So, Mr. Reverend Musselman, he started an organization with seven women. They went in the community and they started a publication. Uh, and so, this is one of the results of his vision and their work. One of the things I love about this that each lesson they may have five, six, or seven different contributors, different writers, and oftentimes uh, there's several women that get involved in writing these lessons. So I really appreciate that. Uh, that's a good thing that I love to see. Losing and gaining. Uh, James, I'll go ahead and read the text. Is that all right? Yeah, go for it. Okay, good. Uh, Luke chapter 9, verses 18 through 27. And it came to pass, as he was alone praying, his disciples were with him, and he asked them, saying, Whom say the people that I am? They answered, said, John the Baptist, but some say Elias. Others say that the one of the old prophets is risen again. He said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? And Peter answering said, the Christ of God. And he straightly charged them and commanded them to tell no man that thing, saying the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be slain and be raised on the third day. And he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whosoever, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Uh, uh, uh. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake the same shall save it. For what is man's advantage if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? That's right. For whosoever shall be ashamed of me of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed. When he shall come in his own glory and his own fathers and of the holy angels. But I tell you the truth. There be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the kingdom of God. Amen, amen. Amen to that. Amen. So there's a lot going on in this passage. Many years ago, I visited the nation of Israel, and I went to Caesarea Philippi, which is where Peter first made this confession mm. that Jesus is the Messiah. Yeah. 
The significance about that is that Caesarea Philippi, um, there were idols to many different gods there. Mm -hmm. uh, it was like um, a big stew of religion, them all mixed together in a, in a blender. And it's significant that at Caesarea Philippi, where the, so many different pagan religions had some sort of altar or some sort of statue, that's where Jesus asked his disciples, who do you say that I am? Mm. And, you know, there are so many different disagreements about uh, what is the truth and what is not, and what is the true religion and what is not. But it really boils down to that question. Mm. Who do yeah. you say that Jesus is? Yeah. Because regardless of whether you say, I don't believe in God, or I don't think it matters, or yeah. I don't believe in this, or do believe in that, you still have to reckon with that question. Who do you believe Jesus is? Yeah. And one thing that uh, I think it's important for us to talk about without being bashful about it is how do we know as Christians that Jesus really is the way? Mm. We live in a, a multicultural society that respects uh, everybody's religion or non-religion. Uh, and I think that's a good thing that we have that freedom in our, in our society. Um, the problem is sometimes that freedom is translated into thinking, well, there must not be any truth or there are, everything is the truth. Mm. Um, and there's a lot of problems with that. First of all, it's not what Jesus taught. Jesus taught and, and he affirmed that he is the Messiah and Amen. that he is the way and the truth and the life. And no one comes to the Father but, but by him. Amen. But how do we know this? Yeah. And so that's the question we want to talk about today. Do you ever have anybody ask you that question? How do you really know that Jesus is the truth? Absolutely, yeah. How do you know there's a God? How do you know Jesus is God? Right. Yep. And um, there is so much to those questions that we can't do it justice just in one teaching. But I want to talk a little bit about how Jesus is different. When I was a young man, I had grown up in a Christian home my whole life. But I came to a point where I had to decide, okay, what do I really believe about Jesus? Yeah, yeah. Do I, do I believe in him simply because I was raised that way? Or because I see the gospel as being the truth? And so I looked into other belief systems. Mm -hmm. I, I became familiar and, and, and did surveys of the teachings of Muhammad, mm -hmm. uh, Siddhartha Gautama, who's Buddha. Mm. Um, wow. Some of the, the Hinduism and, and other Eastern religions mm. um, to see what they taught. How is Jesus different? The Native American worldview and um, you know, some of the ancient uh, worldviews that no longer really are in existence, like Zoroasterism, uh, the Greek philosophers, the existential philosophers, all of this. Uh, because there are so many different men and women over the course of history who have said, I teach you the truth. I show you the truth. Yeah. So how can you know that they're different? That this is the truth. Yeah. Yes. Man, that's a great point. So what's different about Jesus? Yeah. And there are a number of things in my search that I realized that are different about Jesus. There are some things all, all of these different people had alike. They all claimed mm -hmm. to teach the truth. Many of them were persecuted by the societies they lived in. And, and in some cases, they were even killed for it. Mm -hmm. They were often rejected and banished. Oftentimes, they spoke about things like justice and goodness and how people should treat one another. Mm -hmm. A lot of that they had in common. But something about Jesus stands out. Jesus did not just claim to be a teacher or a great prophet, yeah. which he's often referred to as a great teacher, right? yeah, yeah. The, or the great prophet, yeah. um, or a great prophet. Um, in Islam, he's called a, a great prophet, a right. prophet. Right. Um, and uh, Buddhists I've talked to have said Jesus was a great teacher. Yeah. But Jesus didn't um, take that on as his identity. He didn't come to, come to the people saying, I'm a great prophet, a you great need to listen prophet. to me. Right. I'm a teacher, I'm going to teach you the way. Yeah. He didn't say, I teach you the way. He said, I am the way. I am the way. <laughs> he didn't say, I'm just going to tell you what the truth is. He said, I am the truth. I am the truth. Yeah. I'm going to teach you about life. He didn't just say that. He said, I, I am, am the life. life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, James, you just triggered my thought here. You know, Another way, you know, the proof, the proof is in the power mm. and the presence. Mm. Because when I look at these gentlemen here, Peter, James, John, and the rest of the disciples, mm. 
they had just come back from their first mission yeah. to go and spread the gospel, right? Yep. right. <laughs> and God, Jesus gave them this incredible power. Yeah. I've been praying to God, God, can I get some of that power? Let me have Amen. some of that healing power. Let me lay some hands on some people and see some instant. I've even asked God to help, let me bring some people from the, uh, from the dead. I've mm -hmm. been praying, man, God. Yeah. Because that power Mankind, when they see that kind of power, they are going to follow. They're going to either cut themselves on the by the neck or they're going to latch on and follow. Sure. And God, absolutely. Jesus gave these, these men such great power. They're casting out demons. They're mm -hmm. healing the sick and the infirmities. Yes, he I, did. I mean, so when they come back from their mission, and then just before this, he went and fed the 5,000. That's right. So, you know, now they've seen all this great power. Right. They've seen this magnificent presence. Right. And now Jesus says, right. who do they say I am? Right. But more importantly, who do you say I am? That's right. Yep. So who is this Jesus? And the answer that you, that you come up with is going to make a difference for, the, for how you live your life. Yeah. It, it, will, uh, it will change you if you come up with the true answer to this question. Yeah. Jesus did not just claim to be a prophet or a great teacher. We've already had plenty of those in history. Yeah. But Jesus stands out differently he, in that he came to die. Yeah. He came to die and redeem us from our sins because we could not. Uh, there's no human being in the history of the world who is qualified to, to be the world's savior, mm. to be the world's redeemer. Amen. It says in Job, in, in the book of Job, he, he said in chapter 29, I know that my redeemer lives mm. and that someday I, I will see him with my own eyes. And he Hallelujah. will stand on the earth someday. Hallelujah. Who is he talking about? Who in that history of the world would qualify yes. to be the world's redeemer that Job talked about? And I can think of only one. And so when people ask me, do you really believe that you have to believe on Jesus in order to come to God, to be saved? Yeah. My response is, I can't think of anybody else who loved us enough to die for us. Hallelujah. Who loved us enough to pay for our sins. Hallelujah. And proved it by rising from the dead. If you can think of anybody else in history like that, <laughs> let me know. Right, 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 right. Now, you know, you probably would do it for your children. You know, if you had to die for your children, you know, right. you probably would do it for your children. And that's what God did for his children. Yes, absolutely. Huh? <laughs> yes. Uh, now, I tell you, James, when I was looking at uh, uh, one of the first part of this lesson uh, that really stuck to me, I wrote here in the notes of my book, uh, on this first, verse 18, it says, And it came to pass, Jesus was alone praying. Mm. Now, when I saw that, that just, you know, we read this over and over again. We know this text. You know, you all know this. This is no new text. This has been here. But what I thought mm. was, God is praying to God. Yes. That line of communication is open. That's right. And I say to myself, well, David, you know, I, I was on my knees today. I laid in my bed when my eyes opened up. I was laying there on my back talking to God in the dark. I got up and I took a shower and did what I did. And, and then I went downstairs in my spot on my couch. I got on my knees, you know, and I've been talking mm -hmm. to God all day long. But you know what? It's not enough. It's not enough. You know, we got to meditate on God day and night. That's right. All the time. And I figure like this, if God can pray to himself, if God can communicate, God the Son can communicate to God the Father, it just tells me that that should be like a main focus in our lives. And Jesus promised us that we could have that. Yeah. He, he told us um, in, in the book of John, he says, um, I don't tell you that you can... Uh, you have to go just to me in order to go to the Father. You can go to the Father directly. Amen. Because of what Jesus did on the cross. Hallelujah. Paid for our sins. Hallelujah. He wiped out all those things that get between us and God. And he wiped those things out uh, so that we can have uh, free, um, close communication with, with our Heavenly Father. Amen. And you know what, James? I, I, have, I have opened up. I have had a revelation. Um, you know, some people might agree, some people might disagree with this, what I'm about to say. But you know what, man? When I pray, oftentimes I pray to the God inside of me. 
God the Spirit, mm -hmm. God the Holy Ghost. God is in me, right? Yeah. God lives in you, right? Yes, if you're born again, if Jesus is your Lord. Amen. Then I say to myself, why can't I speak to God that is in me? And so there's times when I say, thank you, Father God, for your plan of mm -hmm. salvation. And I'll say, thank you, Jesus, for your obedience to the plan and following mm -hmm. and coming down and dying so that I can have eternal life. And then I'll say, thank you, Holy Spirit, for guiding me and Amen. comforting and protecting me and showing me which way to go throughout this life. Right. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That's right. As uh, historical Christianity teaches that uh, God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit are all the one true God. Yeah. So the Holy Spirit is God. He's not just a power like electricity, but he's God. Yeah. And if he dwells inside of you, that means God dwells inside of you. Amen. Amen. That's good. You know, a lot of times we'll see Jesus as, you know, this faraway uh, magical figure. Not we, but some people, you know, Jesus, Jesus. But we're not really having that intimate relationship mm -hmm. with him. Right. You know, we're seeing him as some character in the Bible sitting up on a throne next to God in some faraway place. But he's inside of us because he is God. He's the triune God. Yeah. So if the Holy Spirit's inside of us, Jesus is inside That's of us. Right. You know, the, the right. Spirit, the Son, and the Father, they're all connected. That's right. And so we have to have a mindset. Uh, this We have to have a mindset that we're connected to Jesus. That's right. Not that he's somewhere far away and we have to get on our pray and, and right. this far away prayer is going to travel way across the universe. Right. No, it's right here, right, right, right. now. Right. A big mistake uh, that I had when I was younger and I think a lot of people have is thinking dualistically, meaning that God is somewhere up in the sky somewhere. And we're down here, and he's like in a room upstairs, and we're downstairs. <laughs> and, that's good. And that's, that's really a very limited pagan view of God. Um, a true biblical view of God is, is that he reveals himself to be almighty and everywhere. Good. Passage that we read a couple weeks ago. The heaven of heavens cannot contain me. Yeah. Cannot contain you. Yeah. How much more this temple that I'm trying to build. In other words, God's not limited to a house. He's not limited to the sky. But he's everywhere. He's here. He's listening to what you and I are saying right now. He's in this room. He's in your room, wherever you are. Uh, he is not only the God who is far off, but the God who is near. And keeping that in mind helps you to stay in contact with him. It's not like he's some far off God somewhere. Good. Good. James, I got to tee you up here. Do you play golf? I do not. Okay. I confess, okay? <laughs> I have never played a round of golf in my entire life. Wow, okay, okay. I think I've asked you that before. Yeah. Uh, I love golf, oh. uh, so we're going to learn some golf. We're going to go out and yeah, practice on the driving range. Um, but I'm going to tee you up here so you can hit the okay. one beautiful 300-yard drive straight down the middle. Um, but um, Jesus, Jesus says to them um, in verse 20, mm -hmm. he says, But who say ye that I am? Um, why do you think... Jesus asked this question. Do you, you know, why would he ask this question when he knows the answers already? Well, I think it was important for them to have to think about that answer. Yeah. Because he was coming to a point in his ministry where he was going to be doing more miracles. Mm -hmm. He was also going to be facing more persecution, which he talked about in the following verses. He says, you'll be hated by all people for my, my name's sake. Um, and so he wanted them to be clear on what they believed about who he is. Yeah. Because you need to be clear about that and be firm in your conviction and your belief system if you are uh, going to face opposition. Yeah. And he knew that they were about to face some opposition. Yeah, good, good. So they wanted to be firm That's on right. what they believe. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very good. So they went out and did all this work. They just seen this great miracle happen. Mm. Now, do you know who I am? That's right. That's right. <laughs> now, do you know? <laughs> right. <'Cause> yes, Lord. Because <laughs> that's what the miracles were about, right? Yeah. Uh, the miracles were to show who Jesus is. Yeah. And when he told his disciples later on, before he ascended to heaven, he said, um, you know, go forth and, and um, 
do these signs and wonders in my name, confirming the word that you're preaching. The yes. purpose of the miracles is to confirm the word of God. Yeah. And sometimes uh, what are called miracles or false miracles um, are kind of draw attention to themselves or to the preacher. And, you know, ooh, great, look at miracles. And I believe in miracles. I pray for people uh, for healing Amen. frequently. And, Amen. and I do believe God works miracles more often than we think. Uh, my concern, though, is, is if we get our focus just on the miracles themselves and we lose focus on the word of God that's being preached because that's the purpose. Yeah. I, I like yeah. how the commentator uh, put this in the book. And I'm going to give this gentleman a shout out. Um, I believe he's out of Ohio. He's a pastor, a senior pastor at Antioch Church. I uh, can't think of the city right now, maybe Miami of Ohio. Um, but his name is Keith E. Eggert, E-G-G-E-R-T. Um, this brother, man, I really enjoy reading his writings here, and I want to share it with you. Uh, he's got a doctorate degree from Dallas Theological, mm -hmm. uh, of course, a master's, bachelor. He's a graduate from Moody Bible Institute. Okay. Well studied. Uh, mm -hmm. But what he wrote here, he says that um, had they come to understand that he, Jesus, was not an ordinary man, that as the Son of God, he was superior to every other person who had ever lived. And then he goes on to say, without hesitation, Peter answered, the Christ of God. Mm. The Greek word Christos meaning anointed and akin to the Hebrew word Messiah. What a great insight, Pastor Keith goes on to say. Jesus was the one, Jesus was the one of, was the one, let me start that over. Jesus was the one the Hebrew Bible kept pointing to. Mm. He was the one for whom all Israel hoped. He was the source of deliverance for all that opposed God's people. Yes, the disciples had gotten it. After repeating the misconceptions of the crowd, Peter had expressed his own conviction. Mm. The Christ of God. Amen. Yeah, I love that. That's some good writing. All right, Jane, let's go to the text. I want to make a point here in verses 21 and 22. Okay. I love how uh, Luke stated this. And he straightly charged them and commanded them to tell no man that thing, mm. saying, the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be slain and be raised the third day. Yes. Now, Pastor Eckert, Pastor Eckert, I like how he puts this. He says, he says here on page 133, he says that now that the apostles had the understanding and it had been confirmed by Jesus himself, the logical next step would seem to be to go spread the word far and wide. Instead, Jesus instructed them to keep this information to themselves. And Luke compares Jesus' intensity to that of a commanding officer mm. using strong language and nothing, and noting that he charged them and commanded them. You know, when I, when I see how Luke has used terms like uh, straightly charged them or commanded them, you know, what I think about is Jesus commanding the angel army. Wow. Wow. Uh, you know, and I think about, I think about the angels that are here protecting us. Right? I think about Jesus from the throne standing up, almost like when Stephen was getting stoned and he said he saw Jesus standing up. I see Jesus commanding the angels from the throne and say, getting those hellhounds that are trying to get me and he's destroying them with the angels, telling the angels, get him, there he is, get him. Getting, you know, getting those hellhounds after me, those demons that are trying to get me. Jesus is commanding the angel army. They got these arrows of fire, you know, <laughs> protecting me. I, I see this vision, right? I mean, that actually happened in the Old Testament. It did, So, yeah. I mean, why wouldn't it happen now? Because we know this is a fight of, in, of invisible fight. <laughs> yep. Jesus said, all authority is given to me in heaven and earth. And 
So he's got authority over all things. In Ephesians 2, he said, it says that uh, after he rose from the dead, God raised him from the dead and set him above all principalities and powers and might and dominion in every name that is named. And so Jesus has that authority. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Now Jesus goes on to say, he lets them know that he's about to give up his life. Right. You know, yeah. um, and I don't know if they totally understood that. You know, right. I'm agree with Mr. Eckert here. He says, um, this did not compute with what they had just learned, right? They had just learned that Jesus had all this power and that he could bestow some of his power on me. Right, he's the Messiah. They just said, hey, you're the Messiah. You're the anointed one, the chosen of God. Right, and yeah. then Jesus says, well, I'm about to give up my life to the Romans. Right, yeah. Like, like huh? Deflation, you know, like, <laughs> what? Let all the air out of the room. Right, because as everybody knows, we're thinking he's going to come and take over Roman control. That's right. He's about to knock Herod off the That's throne. Right. That's right. We're about to come up. Y'all not putting us down no more. That's right. Yeah. We're going to rule with him over the nation of Israel. That's right. Yes. Oh, then what do you mean? What do you mean, Christ of God? You're going to give up your life? You're about to die? And not only that, if you follow him, you've got to also give up your life. Ooh. He who saves his life will lose it. Mm. He who loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it, he said in the book of Mark. Yeah, amen. Amen. That's good, man. That's great. Um, you know, I wrote in my notes here um, that Jesus, you know, they didn't realize that um, like in the Old Testament, they had to sacrifice animals. They didn't remember all this. And this would have been hard for anybody to understand. I'm not knocking anybody. Mm -hmm. um, but then I'm looking at this and I'm thinking about this living sacrifice. Yeah. See, now what I'm thinking about is all those sacrifices that were made in the Old Testament, they're dead. Right. <laughs> they're all dead. Right. And they did what they're, the job, what they're supposed to do, but right. it was a temporal covering. Right. You know, it was like once their blood dried right. <laughs> and they sinned, they could sin that next moment. Right. They got to go and do it again. It was supposed to be a symbol for what was to come. Yeah. 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 A typology. And here we got, here we have the real deal. That's right. A living sacrifice. We have a sacrifice that was killed that was destroyed, mm. that was buried, but still lives. That's right. A living sacrifice. Absolutely. And it, he said, nobody take my life from me. I give it up myself. Amen. And he was willing to do that for us. It's just an amazing thing that God himself would do that. Yes, yes. But he calls us to come after him. He, does, he wants to make it clear to his disciples, if you are going to believe on me as the Messiah, mm -hmm. if you are going to follow me, People aren't going to like that. People aren't going to applaud. It's going to be difficult. Yeah. You, you have to bear your cross. Yeah. And follow him. Yeah. Not because you're trying to earn God's pleasure. Jesus has already done that for you. Yeah. But because that's, that's the price that's paid sometimes for, for putting your trust in what Jesus has done for you. Good. Amen. And many people around the world to this day understand that because they know if they put their trust in Jesus as Lord, mm -hmm. that they might be fired, they might be beat up, mm. they might be killed. Yeah. They might be put in jail. Yeah. And, you know, it makes me think of, like, all the disciples, the martyrs. It makes me yeah. think of the disciples that were martyred. They gave yeah. up their lives. Yeah. For the gospel of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, what an awesome thing and sobering. It doesn't mean that we're somehow less spiritual if we live in a free country like the United States and we're not killed for the good news of Jesus. But it does mean that we need to be ready in our hearts whenever that time comes, whenever we're challenged, to be able to say, I'm going to follow Jesus anyway. And even your threats of killing me, that's not going to stop me from following my Lord Jesus. Now, wasn't there a situation where, um, some, was it Nigeria? Recently in Nigeria, uh, there was a, a picture and a video released of uh, Christian men who were kneeling on the ground and behind them was mm. a, a fairly young boy, 12 or 13 year old what? boy, Muslim radical, what? who beheaded them. What? Simply because they put their trust in Christ and they would not follow Muhammad. They would not 
uh, do the Shahada uh, for Islam, but rather they said, no, we are going to follow Jesus, and whether you kill us or not, we are going to follow him. Wow. Ooh. Yeah. So in that case, that passage suddenly is, is a very real thing. It's not just an abstract concept. Oh, yeah, if you lose your life, you'll, you'll gain it. Um, it's more than just a thought in the mind, but it's, this was the real thing, and they did pay that ultimate price. I mean, right here, Luke says just what you said, 26. Yeah. For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed. Yes. When he shall come in his own glory and in his father's and of the holy angels. Yes. But, whoo, <laughs> I love God. Always gives us an out, boy. But I tell you of a truth. There be some standing here which shall not taste of death mm. till they see the kingdom of God. That's right. Amen, amen. And then the story moves on from there. But uh, whenever I read about the martyrs, even nowadays, there are more people who are being killed for the name of Jesus than any other time in church history. Uh, in the past 2,000 years, uh, the, the current time we live in has seen more martyrs than any, any other time. Wow, I didn't and, know that. And they are encouraging and inspiring, and they remind me that I really don't have anything to complain about. You know, James, um, there's a, it's a, it's a fact, it's a fact that this world is going to get worse. Mm. It's not going to get better. The end times are on its way. And so, you know, every, that's why we have so much perversity and mm. uh, p different diseases are coming, this corona disease, all kind of different things are happening. Cancer is very prevalent. I mean, everybody, in their, everybody has somebody with cancer in their family. Mm -hmm. You know, diabetes, all these things are, are manifesting themselves because Satan is the ruler of this world right now. He's the prince of the air. And so, you know, I, I truly believe that, you know, we can do our best to eat better, and we should. Yes. We can do our best to live better and drink healthy and eat healthy, eat clean and all yeah. of those things. Mm -hmm. But the sin is even in the ground. God <laughs> cursed the ground. Don't That's forget true. that in Good chapter point. three. God yeah. cursed man, he cursed woman, he cursed the beast, and he cursed the ground. Yeah. So, so there's sin in the ground already. Yeah. It's just multiplying itself. It's just spreading and it's going deeper and deeper. So uh, I, say, I say to you, the teachers or Sunday school students, you know, encourage, encourage your students to be bold about Christ, even unto death. We don't think of that too often because we're feel like we're safe in America, right? right. Our military is a great giant military, right. a great military, protects our shores. Uh, when they were bombing over in Iraq um, a couple weeks ago, I didn't think about no bombs coming up in Michigan. <laughs> Right. Well, that's right. I, that's right. I had a greater appreciation for my army, uh, for the army and the military. But right. you know what? Who's in control? The commander of the army angel. Right. That's right. He's in control. Uh, but, go ahead. But persecution sometimes doesn't always come in the form of Thank you. facing a sword and being beheaded Thank you. for the name of Jesus or even being put in jail. Uh, it might come in the form of um, you know, people insulting you yeah. uh, because of your stance in the Word of God Good. or you possibly losing your job or your licensing, those who are, who are my colleagues, you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, there are some times when, when you have to face those decisions. Uh, at what point am I going to stand for what I believe is true? At what point am I not going to do that? And we, we have those decisions frequently, sometimes almost every day. Yeah. And, you know, uh, I, I think that's really the, the thing that we need to take away from what Jesus said here. It's not just about whether or not we die for, for Jesus, which might happen. Yeah. But it's also our daily dying, our daily committing to him and not compromising, not um, choosing what's wrong just because it's convenient. Amen. Amen. There's some questions here. Uh, there's 10 questions in the uh, UGP publication. 
uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Pastor Keith Eckert, uh, looks like he came up with these questions. Why did Jesus suddenly ask his disciples what the people were saying about him? What second question did Jesus ask? What do we most need to understand about who Jesus is? Mm. Uh, what did Jesus strictly tell his disciples to do with the information? And so on. I would really encourage you to pick this publication up. Uh, it's a great uh, tool for teachers and students. Um, there's another section here called Preparing the Lesson. Um, and this is written by a gentleman named Robert Ferguson. And they really give you a, a, a teaching plan. Uh, then there are some other points here, practical points. Build a godly circle of friends for honest fellowship and feedback. Uh, human opinion leads us away from God while the Holy Spirit leads us to Jesus. Mm. God reveals himself on his own terms. This was written by Cheryl Y. Powell. Uh, there's another section on research and discussion, um, illustrating high points. Then they focus on the golden text, which was verse 23. There's a whole writing on that um, by Jennifer Francis. So, you know, I... I love, I love, uh, and I respect people that have gone on to get their masters and their doctorate degrees. Now, don't mm -hmm. get me wrong; mm -hmm. God can anoint anyone He chooses, That's right. and He can use anyone He chooses. I'm not saying that mm -hmm. in order to have enlightenment from God, you have to go to school. But what I am saying is, if you have the opportunity, it is a privilege to go to seminary yeah. and get some additional learning because there's, as you know, it's like the sands on the beach, you know, mm -hmm. the grains of sands on the beach, you know, you can gather all you want and then there's miles more to get. That's right. <laughs> yes. And the fact is we need to know what we're doing. When we are opening up scriptures to teach people and teaching the scriptures, we need to know what we're doing. I mean, we wouldn't have somebody come in and fix our plumbing who didn't really know what they were doing, they had just dabbled in it a little bit here or there, or work on our car, or fly an airplane who had just flown a couple times and had kind of an idea what to do. Right. We don't do that, so why would we do that with the Holy Scriptures? We want somebody uh, teaching us who really knows what they're doing. Amen. Who's been well-trained and who has experienced in the Word of God. Amen, amen, thank you. Uh, uh, brothers and sisters, I wanna say thank you for tuning in. Uh, also, if you would, please help us share the Word of God. Um, if you would share this video on your social media pages, uh, if you would like it, comment on it, uh, and please subscribe to our channel. In the last month, uh, we have uh, done half of the production that we've done in the last three months. We've had more people subscribing, more people liking our videos, more people viewing our videos mm -hmm. in the last 28 days than we've had in over the three month time frame. So we thank you for your continued support. Yeah. Um, uh, Brother James and I were great friends from going way back from high school. That's right. And I just love the opportunity for a white man and a black man to get together and share yep. and eat at the table and That's share right. God's word. Absolutely. It's a, just a beautiful picture to me. Because there's no color to the soul. You know, all of us have, have the soul and we have the spirit. Amen. For uh, watching in its entirety and tuning in, uh, I want to give a special shout out to uh, our, one of our new sponsors, Great Giant Supermarket. Uh, they have been really good for us. Uh, so we want to say thank you to New York Fried Chicken. I mm -hmm. uh, would like to say thank you to GRTV and the staff here at GRTV, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Will, Chris, and Ted, uh, Miss Bet. Thank you so much. And then also, uh, last but certainly not least, I want to say thank you to the Urban Youth Tech Lab. Uh, we have a uh, youth that we work with. There's four that work with us, um, Jaquante, Maritza, uh, Blessed, and Junior. Mm -hmm. And they come in every week and they work with us in the control room. They help us set up the cameras, the lights. Uh, and they, when you see the cameras zooming in and out, that's them doing that. They're, yep. they're between the age of 9 and 11 years old. Oh, there they go. Switched yeah, it up there right go. there. They're still, go ahead, switch it up again for them, guys. Do something nice. Yeah. Zoom in and zoom out. Maybe they're not listening. 
out there, they go, oh, okay. Anyways, so the yeah. urban youth Don't encourage that. them too much. They're going to mess with us and <laughs> distort our faces or something. Yeah, but we're, we're training up a child That's as they right. should go. and We're teaching them skill sets so that right. they can take these things and move forward in life. That's right. Uh, yeah. Last, if you would, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, hit the notifications bell. That way when we upload it, you'll get notified and you can go ahead and, and see what we got to say about the Word of God. Yes. And if you would share this, if that means a ton to us, please mm -hmm. share this. Thank yeah. you so much. And keep your eyes on Jesus. God bless you and good night. Good night.